So here we go. Let's jump into the strategies, which is I know why everyone is here. So the first strategy that we want to talk about is being intrusive. Now, what does it mean to be intrusive? It means for us to, in a positive way, intrude and to engage students proactively without waiting for them to come to us. So we want to think about this as, a, as an important concept, especially in an environment where students are experiencing incredible pressures, that we have to be proactive, that it is not incumbent for the student to reach out to us, but for us to reach out to them and to continue to do so, so we're making sure that no one is falling th down through the, uh, through the cracks, that no one is not being served. So on the next slide, we have some recommendations on how we can actually do that. The first thing we recommend is conduct an informal assessment of students' experiences in online learning. So um, now this is in general a concept that we can think about for any online class, but is probably even more prevalent and important right now, given that we have students who may have never taken online classes before who are now being taught online. And similarly, we have faculty members who have never taught online before and are now being uh, teaching online. So we need to conduct a base level assessment. The first thing you should do is ask your students, is this the first time you've taken a class online? Uh, how are you accessing this class? Are you using a private computer, a public computer? Are you using a tablet, a mobile phone? Like, what, what, how are you actually getting this information? Because that might be important for you to know in terms of what students have, and for some students, what they don't have. And that you should keep that in mind so that you can be create variable opportunities for students to be able to engage. What concerns do you have about taking this course? How can I best facilitate your learning in this course? And are there any other concerns or information that you would like to share? You should do that from the very onset with every single student. It may be even important to even more important to ask that last question because you might hear issues about uh, food insecurity housing insecurity you might hear about transportation concerns other factors that are really putting pressures on our students the second thing you need to do is prepare and email the students with a brief orientation to the course that introduces them to your learning management system and other technology that they're going to need if you're in uh, like most of us are on courses that have already begun, then do that now. Send a video of, your spell, of yourself, especially if you're using an asynchronous modality. And when you do so, be enthusiastic, especially in a time when everything else seems so depressing. It would be nice to, to engage students in a very positive and affirming way. Provide asynchronous alternatives. Now, you might be asking yourself why we would say this, given that we just showed data that shows that asynchronous might not be the best um, way to do this. And the, the, the last recommendation we have here shows why that's important. You can record all uh, class sessions and then make it available to them um, so that they can reach it at different times. So that, hey, if I'm unable to be able to get to the class at this time, that I would have access to it in a different way. Why? Because right now, flexibility is key. We need to be as flexible as possible so that we're meeting the needs of all of our students, recognizing that the typical traditional, I'm going to stand and deliver, I'm going to give them content at this time, I'm going to do this the way that I've always done it, will not work with our, our current students and in this current climate. On the next slide, we also believe it's important for us to make success in the course transparent. Now, before I get to these recommendations, I wanna give this caveat. First, this has to be done in a very careful way. You have to make success transparent while also not putting down your students. For example, we've heard faculty members who've said, this was already a difficult class. I can imagine it's gonna be even more difficult online. Probably not the best way to start out the class, right? Especially given the recent transition. But being proactive about making sure the students are aware of what the expectations are is important. So transparency and being proactive in, in answering the question, what will it take to be successful in the class? Putting that out there for them to know. Talking about where are the, are the different resources that are available to them. Now, most universities and colleges right now are sending out resources about uh, basic needs and emergency responses, about access to technology um, and, and uh, emergency scholarships. So just make sure that also as part of this that you're sending that information to your students so that they're aware of it so that they're not just getting it in one email that might come from the university but they're also getting it from you as a faculty member it's not only just good practice for being intrusive it's also a way of showing that you care 
and thinking about how should I approach the readings, uh, begin to study and prepare for the exams, take and organize my notes, so just be real, um, provide really good instruction for what that actually means for the students in this time so that they know exactly what's expected of them and how they can be successful. Now, let me just say this. Some of you might be saying to yourself, like, I don't actually know totally the answers to those questions right now, given this rapid transition. So if you're going to have grace with yourself around that, you should also think about how can you have grace with your students. Next slide. We also want to use assessment strategies that focus on continuous improvement and progress toward demonstrating proficiency by the end of the course. So using assessment strategies that can break things up, for example, into smaller assignments with uh, lower total points versus larger assignments with big points. Uh, for example, uh, some classes might have had a structure where they were using a midterm and then a final. That might actually not be the best approach right now. We need to meet learners where they're at uh, and not what is best for us necessarily, but thinking about what is best for them. Part of that involves, you know, again, doing that foundational work of asking students what's going on so we can respond to it. Davidson 2015 suggests that non-text-based assignments and activities such as multimedia presentations, speeches, debates, and role plays may also be important. And we also agree with that as a recommendation. The idea is to have variable ways in which students can complete assignments given that we're living in a variable society where information is dynamic. It's great, uh, grade based on effort um, and also grade uh, and give lots of feedback. We wanna make sure that we're uh, making sure that uh, we're giving the students the type of feedback that they need. And feedback should be personalized to the extent possible. So for example, notes about students' improvement, uh, resources uh, that students might find helpful, suggestions for extending novel ideas and concepts. You can also, also offer alternative course grading options. For example, um, if it is approved by your institution to do so, consider whether you can do a satisfactory progress or a pass, no pass. Now, these also have financial aid implications. So don't do anything that do, is not in alignment with your existing university policy because you don't want to do something that you think is helping students while then simultaneously creating greater disproportionate impact for students who might be athletes or students who might need, need certain classes to be able to transfer or to go on to graduate programs. So it's, it's actually complex in terms of offering alternative grading options. So whatever you do, you need to do in consultation with your department chair, with your dean, and with your vice president of instruction or provost. Next slide. So in general, the focus here is on performance monitoring, right? But let me explain what that is, right? Performance monitoring is basically interceding before it's too late, before students have left. One of the things that we have found in our work routinely is that oftentimes educators wait until it's too late. The student who becomes disengaged is harder to engage than the student who is in the margins. We don't want to wait for a student to give up or withdraw or to drop the class. And that's what should be a big concern for us right now, um, especially given what might be variable ad drop deadlines across multiple, multiple institutions and what that might mean for students' financial aid moving forward. So we want to, in really in general, promote mandatory interaction. And at, at what point, so this is one thing that we hear around this a lot. Some people say, you can be too intrusive. You can be too intrusive to the point where you're coddling students. I believe that there's no such thing. Our job is to create a net of support that is so tight that students cannot drop through it. And this is what one faculty member said. He said, you must monitor them and catch problems and address them before it's too late. Loss of points for attendance and submitting assignments uh, discourage students from persisting. If a student is late on assignment and figured they will lose so many points a day and and they are three days late, they'll most likely not see any point in submitting a late assignment. Then there's a snowball effect. One, they're late, and then they do not turn in several assignments. They do not see a need to continue to attend the class. The end result is a failed grade. Uh, a couple failed grades, and they will not see a need to continue going to school. So we want to intercede before it's too late, and we have to be proactive. We're providing them with um, numerous follow-ups. 